Lord, we give all the praise, all the glory, all the honor unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahushai, Bahashem, Rukakudash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me the truth. Also, one acknowledge Allah Akya for pushing the truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. This is uh, 2 Chronicles 7 and verse 1. This is Solomon dedicating the house, dedicating to the house of Yahweh after he built the, uh, the temple. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering. And the sacrifices and the glory of Yahweh filled the house. Now that fire would have been coming out of a chariot, all right? Verse 2. And the priests could not enter into the house of Yahweh because the glory of Yahweh had filled the Lord's house. All right, so... <laughs> Not even the priest could go into the house, right? Because, hey, that was a sacred, holy moment where not even the priest could enter into the house of Yahweh. All right? Verse 3. When, and when all the sons of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of Yahweh upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped and praised Yahweh saying, For he is good and his mercy endureth forever. Alright, so part of the glory of Yahweh are the chariots. That's why in Matthew 24 it tells you that Yahweh Shah is coming with power and great glory. Because why? Because he's coming on, the, uh, on a chariot. The angels will be following him, ready for war. Matthew 24. And 30 and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory because the clouds represents the chariots you can read about that in Psalm 104 3 and so the the uh, the glory is the chariots also those chariots are beautiful I mean, even when we catch them on our cameras, and when I say we, I'm talking about everybody in the history of mankind. When we've seen chariots, they've come in different variations, but they're very beautiful, all right? Which that word glory goes into beautiful. Seven and verse four, Second Chronicles. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before Yahweh. And King Solomon offered a sacrifice of uh, and King Solomon offered a sacrifice of twenty and two thousand oxen and a hundred and twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of most the most high, Yahweh. So it was a it's basically a great celebration. And this is where we're going into the Feast of Tabernacles, and that's the spirit, because we're actually holding the, spe the Feast of Tabernacles on uh, Sunday after count. You know, it's supposed to be a seven-day thing, but we're in captivity. We can't we can't keep the feast seven days. You know, without without getting fired from our our jobs here in Babylon, here in slavery. So we can't keep the laws to perfection. You see. We try to keep the laws to the best of our ability. Verse 6. And the priests waited on their offices, the Levites also with instruments of music of Yahweh, which David the king had made to praise Yahweh, because his mercy endureth forever. When David praised by their ministry, and priests sounded trumpets before them, and all Israel stood. All right. So not only the uh, Levites were they the the priests, but they were also the uh, they were also the uh, in entertainers, the instru the ones who were playing the music. Tells you right here. That's why a lot of Esau knows this 
That's why Isaidum he uses a lot of the entertainment that in the industry. A lot of these entertainers are from the tribe of Levi. They're like Haitian descent, right? So like you got people like uh, Nicki Minaj. She's a uh, she's Haitian descent, you know, which she would be uh, considered a Levite. Of course, Esau uses the Levites in wickedness up to to uh, push the uh, left hand agenda. But I'm just making a point. Levites are their priests in the ancient and they're also uh, entertainers with music verse 7 moreover Solomon hallowed the middle of the court that was before the house of Yahweh for there he offered burnt offerings and the fat of the peace offerings because the brazen altar which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offerings and the meat offerings and the fat also, at the, t at the same time, Solomon kept the feast seven days, and all Israel with him, a very great congregation, from entering in of Hamath unto the river of Egypt. In the eighth day they made a solemn assembly, for they, have, for they kept the dedication of the altar seven days and the feast seven days. And on the three and twentieth day of the seventh month, he sent people away into their tents, glad and merry in their heart for the goodness that Yahweh had shown unto David and Solomon and to Israel his people. Right? Verse 11. Thus Solomon finished the house of Yahweh and the king's house and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of Yahweh and in his own house he prosperous prosperously prosperously effected all right you got to remember we were in uh, we were in power right now when we're reading during the time of king Solomon Israel was the power on the earth the heathen were subjects unto, unto the Israelites during the time of King David and King Solomon. So we were prosperously, prosperous, I don't know why I can't say that word. Verse 12, And Yahweh appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and I have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. All right? So Yahweh was pleased with the prayer of Solomon. When, when Solomon was, uh, you know, when he made the prayer, remember, Solomon prayed for the wisdom to lead the Israelites. He prayed for the wisdom to be a, you know, righteous judge in the eyes of Yahweh. He didn't pray for, uh, what does the Lord say? Yahweh said he, he was proud of him because he didn't pray for extended life, riches, or the death of his enemies. But instead, he prayed he wanted to be, uh, you know, lead the people correctly. So that was a beautiful, humble prayer that our Lord, or I'm sorry, well, that's the spirit that made, that made me say that. Because uh, Solomon would become our Lord, Yahweh Shai, through the reincarnation, through the regeneration. So, but anyway, I'm on verse 13. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I commanded the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. You see, so that's what we're doing now. We're... we're, we're uh, seeking Yahweh's face we're humbling ourselves you know we're turning from our wicked ways right we're not calling on no false gods anymore we're calling on the true names Yahweh Bahashem Yahushai you know we are humbling ourselves and we you know it's what it is so guess what Yahweh's gonna deliver us 
from destruction, pestilence, you know, all the, the calamities that we're about to behold, all right? Verse 15, now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. So remember, we, we always tell you that the, the, the temple today that's being built is the men. We're the church. We're the temple. We're the tabernacle. The men. And so Yahweh, he said he's going to, he, he's he sanctified this house, meaning he's made it clean. You know, when you sanctify something, it means you're you're cleansing it. Like that's where they get the word sanitation, right? Sanctify, it means to be made clean, to be made holy. That's what's happening uh, by this knowledge, by this truth. We're being made sanctified and holy and cleansed. All right? Let me see if I can get remember the precept. Psalm 119, 11, maybe? <coughs> no. Let's see. Psalm 11, 19, maybe? No, that's not it either. Let me get this. Psalm 119. All right, I was right, but I just went to the wrong verse. Psalm 119. And let me see if I can find it. There it is. Psalm 119.9. Beth, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto unto according to thy word? All right. So that's how we cleanse ourselves, by taking heed to this word. And it's like what he said. He said, I'm going to sanctify my people. And if we turn from our wicked ways, if we seek Yahweh's face, all right? Second Chronicles 7, and where am I at? He's going to be with us perpetually. That means ongoing, I mean forever. Verse 17. And as for thee, if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded thee, and shall observe my statutes and my judgments, then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom according as I have covenanted with David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man to be ruler in Israel. All right, and of course that didn't, you know that that didn't be uh, that didn't come to pass because um, yeah, um, I keep wanting to say I was shy, but Solomon, Solomon in his old age, remember he dedicated uh, temples and and, and uh, groves unto uh, other gods when he was dealing with the heathen women in his old age. He turned away away from Yahweh. So let's read verse 19. But if ye turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, and that's what happened, because Solomon fucked up. Verse 20. Then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my hand of my land, which I have given them. And that's what happened to our people. We've been plucked up out of the roots. That's why our people lost their heritage. That's why people, our people lost the remembrance of who they were. They, were, they lost, uh, you know, they, they, Yahweh, Bashim Yashai, turned their face against them. You see? And this house which I have sanctified for my name will I cast out of my sight. And I will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. And those bywords are what you, you Israelites are being called today. You're being called blacks, Latinos, Hispanics, Native Americans, 
uh, Cubans, um, Puerto Ricans, Brazilians, Colombians, etc. All right. Verse 21. And this house, which is high, shall be an astonishment to everyone that passed by it, so that he shall say, Why hath Yahweh done thus unto this land and unto this house? And that's what they do. They're like, Damn, why the Israelites are, are the thugs and the and the you know they're they're the bottom of society, man. The heathen, you know, when when it, when an Israelite walks into a heathen store. They, uh, they look down on you or a restaurant you know that's why they did that that, um, that movie um, what is it don't be a menace remember when they when they uh, they show them walk into the convenience store that's owned by the Moabites and then the door opens and it goes niggas you know like a warning that's what this is talking about you know our people are, are looked down upon because of the curses we're under, all right? You know, you go into a dealership and, and maybe, uh, you know, they assume if you're if you're an Israelite, or, and, and they don't know you're an Israelite, but if you're a so-called black or Latino or Hispanic, you don't have money to, to, to purchase a vehicle. Or if you go to, a, you know, go to buy, you go to buy something expensive, they don't think you can afford it because they know our people are cursed. All right? So we're an astonishment to the heathen. But Yahweh is raising us up in these last days. We're, we're being, you know, the tables are turning because we're remembering. It starts out with the Lord's prophets. We're remembering our power. We're remembering ourselves in our captivity. Let's grab that real quick. The Baruch 2 and 4, maybe. Well, I'll read this one because this is going into the same thing. It says, Moreover, he hath delivered them to be in subjection to all the kingdoms that are round about us to be as a reproach and desolation among all the people round about where the Lord Yahweh hath scattered them. See, so we've been a reproach, which is a shame. And we've been in subjection to all these kingdoms. All these heathen had a chance to rule over us, you know, in the Egyptian captivity. In the Assyrian captivity, in the Babylonian captivity, in the uh, Greco-Roman captivity, you know, in the Medo-Persian captivity. You see, so the heathen have had their hand uh, to rule over us, you know. Let's see. Maybe it's Baruch 4. Oh, here it is. Baruch 2 and 30. For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff-necked people, but in the land of their captivities they shall remember themselves. You see, so we're remembering there's our, we're remembering our power, Yahweh. All right? Let's keep reading. And shall know that I am Yahweh, their power, for I will give them an heart and ears to hear. A heart is mind. So he's given us a mind to understand what the truth is. He's given us a mind to remember ourselves. He's given us a mind. And let's read verse 32. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. So that's what's happening. We're thinking upon the true names now. We got the names. Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahushai. You see? Let's read verse 33. And return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds, for they shall remember the ways of their fathers which sinned before Yahweh. All right? So it tells you, now we're, we're, we're remember, we're, we're learning the ancient ways, the old ways. We're remembering ourselves. Because we knew the names Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, you know, in the past, in, in the ancient times. It was in this captivity... You know, and also the Greco-Roman captivity, we had to be um, brought back into this knowledge, into this truth, which we're still in, basically, the Greco-Roman captivity, because America is an extension of Rome. This is, we're still under the dominion of the Edomite, 
which during the Greco-Roman captivity, those were Edomites also ruling over us. Okay? That shows you we're close to the end because we know this kingdom is falling and our kingdom is about to rise up, meaning Yahweh Bashem Yahushai is about to visit the earth. It says, this is how we know this is, our kingdom is coming soon. Second Ezra 6 and 9, for Esau is the end of the world. Because remember, Esau's had, he's been in dominion over us since the Greco-Roman captivity. And now the American captivity. For Esau is the end of the world. So the so-called white man is the end of the world. And Jacob, which is the father of the so-called black, Latino, and Native Americans, is the beginning of it that followeth. So Esau's end is our beginning. And that comes with uh, Yahweh Bashim Yahshai visiting the earth. Spiritually right now, and eventually, very soon, it's going to be a physical deliverance. It's going to be a physical transition. It's going to be a... a um, uh, it's going to be a, you know, a transition of uh, dominion. I'm trying to remember what precept. Let me see. Bear with me. If I can find this verse, all right, here we go. So this is the verse, I, I think it is the verse I'm looking for. This is Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. Is this Yahweh who's going to give us the kingdom, right? Yahweh Shai is going to deliver us, but it's going to be the will of Yahweh. Ecclesiasticus 10 and 8 says, be of right of un Because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. See? So right now, we read it earlier, Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of the, the following. So Esau's dominion ends and then our dominion begins, which will be in the kingdom. The kingdom is translated from one people to the other. The kingdom is dealing with rulership, all right? And it's actually dealing with literally the kingdom of heaven, our kingdom, our heaven, our heaven, our rulership is the end of Esau's kingdom, the end of Esau's rulership. All right. So with that, I want to give all the praise, all the glory, all the honor to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Raka, Kudash. Double honors goes out to the other apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me the truth. Also, one Ekmajlakiam, who are pushing the truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. Shalom to the elect.